welcome to this second video about seasonal forecasts from the Met Office. In this film, we're going to be discussing what a seasonal forecast is and what it isn't, and the fundamental reasons behind why we can even make seasonal forecasts in the first place. I'm no expert in seasonal forecasting, but fortunately here at the Met Office we have several experts and I'm joined by Joe Darren, uh, Science Manager for the International Climate Services team. Joe, just what is a seasonal forecast? So a seasonal forecast is a prediction of the long-term behaviour of weather, typically for a three to six month period. And the forecasts are first made several months ahead of a season and then updated regularly as the season approaches. So seasonal forecasts provide information on, for example, average temperature over the winter. But crucially, they do not provide forecasts of the day-to-day -day weather, like weather forecasts. This is because our atmosphere is a chaotic system. In the 1960s, scientist Edward de Rens used simple mathematical models to demonstrate that tiny errors at the beginning of a weather forecast spread rapidly and grow larger with time. This became known as the butterfly effect. This is why the atmosphere is so difficult to predict the further we look into the future. Because the atmosphere is chaotic, it's not only impossible to accurately forecast day-to-day -day weather in a season, but we also can't provide accurate forecasts for a specific location, such as a village or area postcode. So therefore, seasonal forecasts are predictions for a large spatial area, typically an area covering the size of a country or several countries. Finally, seasonal forecasts are expressed using probabilities, typically the probability of how the next season will compare to average or normal conditions for that season. Again, this contrasts with short-range weather forecasts where there's more certainty and often only the most likely outcome is given, such as forecasting a maximum daily temperature of 15 degrees Celsius or heavy rainfall expected in the afternoon. Rather, a seasonal forecast will tell us, for example, the chances of a warmer or colder than average season. So in other words, you can think of a seasonal forecast as a blurry photograph you can't quite pick out the details of exactly who's in the picture or where it is, but you still have some information on what the picture is showing. As a weather presenter, I'm always asked how accurate our weather forecasts are, and I always say five to seven days for any kind of detail. So how is it at all possible that we can give forecasts for several months ahead, as we do in a seasonal forecast? Well, to help answer that question, we first need to understand what factors control the long-term climate of a region. And then, which of those factors influence the year-to-year -year variability away from that climate? A location's climate is largely controlled by factors that are fixed, like where it is on the planet. For example, places close to the equator typically experience a warmer, tropical climate, and places closer to the poles experience a much colder, polar climate, mainly due to the amount of solar radiation received at the surface throughout the year. Other fixed factors that influence climate include the proximity to mountains and oceans. In seasonal forecasting, we're interested in those factors that vary, as these can cause variability from one season to the next. And these are what we call climate drivers. Now, climate drivers is a, is a term I've heard more and more frequently over recent years. Just uh, describe or explain what is a climate driver. So a climate driver are elements of the climate system that affect or influence a region's climate, but that vary in time and do so much slower than processes that affect day-to-day -day weather. A particularly important climate driver is the ocean. As you can see in this animation, the ocean heats up and cools down much more slowly than the atmosphere, making it possible to predict aspects of the ocean's behaviour several months ahead. And when a large area of the ocean's surface is warmer or cooler than normal, it can affect the air above. This can influence large-scale weather patterns around the world. Other climate drivers include changing conditions of sea ice at the poles, snow cover over land, and moisture conditions in the soil. Climate drivers, and in particular the ocean, are the main reason why seasonal forecasting is possible. But we first need to understand how these drivers can affect the region we're interested in. And this can be done by relating past weather observations to observations of the key climate drivers. And by understanding these relationships and representing them in forecast models, we can then make predictions a season ahead. So, uh, for an example, if here in the UK we have a wet summer, that could be related to a climate driver in a completely different part of the world. Yes, exactly, though it's not always that straightforward. 
Seasonal forecasts perform best when there is a strong relationship with predictable climate drivers. And this map shows where seasonal forecasts perform well and not so well. You can see that the seasonal forecasts typically perform better in the tropics, where relationships between the ocean and the atmosphere are usually strongest. And these regions are referred to as having higher predictability. So in some places, climate drivers have much less of an effect. And in these places, there's lower predictability, meaning that seasonal forecasts won't be as accurate. And an example of a climate driver, El Nino, a classic example, perhaps? Yes, exactly. So El Nino, Southern Oscillation, or ENSO for short, is a key climate driver with well-established relationships with the climate in different regions of the world. ENSO is a phenomenon involving changes in the ocean and atmosphere over the tropical Pacific, with changes happening over a two to seven year cycle. The warm phase, El Nino, and the cool phase, La Nina, can disrupt weather patterns across many parts of the world, but especially in the tropics and subtropics. For example, El Nino events have been linked to drier than average conditions in South Asia during the summer monsoon, and wetter than average conditions over East Africa between September and January. I think we can have a bit of a demonstration now uh, to explain a little bit more about um, climate drivers. This bit of kit, uh, thank you very much, is uh, something called a Galton board. Yes, that's right. So this is a Galton board and we can use it as an analogy to explore how climate drivers influence uh, a region's climate. Um, so if I drop one of these balls at the top here, then what happens is it, as it hits one of these pins, there's about an equal chance or 50-50 chance of going either side. What we have to do is drop lots of them in and we can eventually find that it builds up a distribution. This is similar to the natural chaos in the climate system. So what we can see is that a ball is more likely to land near the center with a lower chance of it landing near the edges. The resulting distribution resembles many climate distributions. For example, you could think of the center as representing the average rainfall for a region and either side would be drier or wetter than average. So this is a, an average distribution, but what if a climate driver is involved, uh, such as El Nino, it's known to influence a region, then the distribution would change? Yes, exactly. So if there was a climate driver, this would effectively act to tilt the board. This means the balls are more likely to fall to one side, shifting the distribution and changing the probabilities so that a drier or wetter season is now more likely. Let's imagine an El Nino is forecast. We know, for example, that El Nino is typically associated with drier than average conditions in India during the summer monsoon. Whilst we still can't tell exactly where the ball will fall, we can say that the distribution of possible outcomes would shift to drier than average conditions, noting that wetter than average conditions are still possible, just less likely. So even though chaos is still present, climate drivers give us a source of predictability which makes seasonal forecasts possible and potentially useful. So of course the climate system is not as simple as this and often there are several climate drivers interacting with one another and in our analogy it's not always clear which way the board will tilt or to what extent adding uncertainty to the forecast joe thank you very much so in summary we've learned in this video that seasonal forecasts are predictions of long-term weather typically for a three to six month period and over a large spatial area they do not predict day-to-day -day changes in weather or provide detailed information for a specific location. Forecasts are usually expressed as probabilities of how the forecast conditions compared to average conditions. And the fundamental reason they are possible is thanks to the slow-moving climate drivers, like ocean temperatures. Do join us for our next video when we'll be learning about how we use our understanding of the climate system to generate seasonal forecasts.